Welcome to the Utah Puck Report. I'm your host, Jay Stevens. Uh, glad to be here. And some changes going on with the Utah Grizzlies. And, you know, we interviewed Jared Youngman last week, and he's on his way out. He's with Atlanta now. So, obviously, somebody's got to be the new vice president. Is that what you're called now? Yeah, vice uh, vice president of ticket sales, yeah. Vice president of ticket sales. John Riley. John, welcome to the show. Thanks, Jay. Thanks for having me. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us your background and how you got into ticket sales and professional hockey. Yeah, so originally I'm from upstate New York, a uh, little city called Binghamton, just south of Syracuse, um, if anyone's been to the Northeast. Um, it was kind of a unicorn situation for the sports world there. We have the New York Mets AA baseball team. Uh, I know them as the Binghamton Mets. They've changed their name now to the Rumble Ponies. Oh, wow. Um, it, it's quite interesting. Rumble Ponies. Yeah, it's quite the interesting <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, name. But then in hockey, we had the AHL. Um, Binghamton's had hockey for 50 years. We had the Senators yep. uh, for when I was growing up. And then when I got my start as an inside sales rep, we were the Devils. So I worked for the Devils organization for a few years. Uh, dabbled a little bit in baseball. That's a tough schedule to go from hockey and then work baseball. Yeah, because um, most people go from like one sport to hockey, they're like, man, that's all of a sudden I got 80 games. Now yeah. all of a sudden you got 160. Yeah, yeah. I was working minor leagues down uh, in Maryland for the Orioles organization. So we were 30 minutes away from the beach. So that was also wow. hard yeah. to work your Friday, Saturday nights. And <laughs> the beach is a half hour away. Um, did that for a little bit and then got the chance to go back to Binghamton and run the group sales department and inside sales department. And then, you know, the little thing we all know is COVID happened and the team moved to Utica and I decided to go get a real job. Um, oh, that gross. We call it in the sport. Yeah, exactly. Um, and my wife, thankfully, I think got sick of me going when we'd go to sporting events going, oh, they should do this. They should do this. And <laughs> she's from the West Coast. So she's like, OK, well, let's go back towards the West Coast. And Tucson opened up and then, uh, you know, had this opportunity through some mutual people in the industry to, you know, come here to Utah. All right. So let's talk. What were you doing in Tucson? Yeah, so I was our ticket sales manager. Um, so pretty much, you know, running the ticket sales staff in conjunction with our uh, VP or not senior director of sales, and then our team president Bob Hoffman, who some people listening probably know Bob from his time here in Utah yep. as well. Yep. So uh, there's a little connection there. So I was doing that, uh, a little bit of everything. Um, you know, the grunt work, the dirty work in Tucson with ticketing stuff like that, and you know, dealing with some interesting situations. Crazy. All right. So let's just get it out of the way now. Yeah. Because people are going to ask the fact that you were with Tucson and every, and it's my fault because I've been spreading this rumor nonstop <laughs> because this is what should happen is that the, the Utah Grizzlies should be like, we should bring an AHL franchise to the Maverick center that should play as the Utah Grizzlies. Mm -hmm. And that kind of solves a couple problems for what mm -hmm. we're doing. Like, or, you know, for growing hockey here, that's what makes sense to me. And then we take the ECHL affiliate, move it to St. George, name it something else. Mm -hmm. But everybody's going to say, oh, well, the Grizzlies just brought the Tucson guy in. That's a clear sign. So let's talk about that right now. Is there anything? There is. Uh, there's no inside information. There's no connection with, with okay. that. It just happened to work out that this, this it's kind of the situation. That was the joke when I was leaving was, uh, oh, you're following the Coyotes, the Utah, yeah. aren't you? And yeah. Uh, just perfect timing, weird coincidence, I would say. Um, but that's the other thing I tell people is I've got family asking me friends and like, <laughs> hey, are they going to be AHL? And I'm like, I find out when you find out. Right. Like, there's no, I'm not holding any secrets in my back pocket. So, yeah, there was no connection there. Just a weird, funny coincidence. And it's funny because uh, we had Adrian Denny on the show yep. a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, you're a Tucson broadcaster. And I was talking to him about it too. And he's – we were talking about that young one was leaving and that, and, and Adrian's like, we might have a guy, the guy who might be coming from Tucson. I'm like, Oh, that's convenient. And he's like, I know it sounds convenient, but it, there's nothing to it. Like it's, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's yeah. just the, he's the right guy for the job. He's, mm -hmm. he's the qualified applicant. He's going to win out. And Adrian knew without a doubt, like if, if you put in that you would be the guy that mm -hmm. they selected, he thought very highly of you. Yeah. And we think very highly of Adrian. And, and we were talking about it before, like the jobs, uh, people don't understand the jobs that, that you have to do behind yeah. the scenes. Like you're not just on the phone 
you know, selling a ticket or answering somebody online selling a ticket. You've got to get you're in the trenches nonstop. And you're not just selling tickets. You're yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you told me that one time you were the mascot and one time you were the play by play and one time I haven't done play by play. Mascot when I was in uh Maryland with the Del Marva Shorebirds, I was the mascot one time for a photo. And it was kind of awkward because they said, okay, everyone smile, and you've got the mask on, and I <laughs> smiled under the mask. So, yep, been the mascot, done that, you know. It's, yeah, that's funny, though. Like, yeah. to being the mascot, it's kind of, one time uh, I was working for a, a different radio station, and we had a mascot that was the bear. Mm. And we happened to be at a hockey event, and the guy didn't show up that was supposed to go on the ice. And they're like, well, and I was just, the, I was the youngest DJ at the station at the time, and, I, and they're like, well, that guy will, Jay will do it. So, yeah, I put on the bear outfit and went out for the bikini contest at the old Salt Lake Golden Eagles and acted like the bear. And it's funny being in that suit. Yeah. Like, you're just uh, – at first, once you learn how to function in it, and, yeah, you might be smiling or doing whatever, it kind of is uh, – you get some inhibitions that are gone. Oh, yeah. And you can just be a goofball, and everybody loves it. Yeah, yeah. It's actually funny in our staff in Tucson. We had, uh, you know, University of Arizona's down there. Their mascots are Wilbur and Wilma, and we had – a past Wilbur and a past Wilma on our staff, but they refused to be dusty. Yeah. They, they paid their, like, yeah, yeah, they they like, pay their dues. They paid their dues. We're dusty. Yeah. Dusty, the road runner, dusty, the road runner. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So tell us, so Utah comes on the market or on the radar for you to come in and, mm-hmm. um, what's the process like to get hired on? Do you, is it one, one interview? Is it multiple interviews? Uh, so that was actually a real a funny situation too. It's probably not a normal situation. Um, so I was connected by a uh, sales trainer that I've worked with for years, works with the ECHL, posted the job, and said, and I said, hey, Murray, I'd love to hear more about this. And he's like, hey, you're my top candidate. Let me connect you with, um, you know, Kevin and Jill. And it was funny enough, it was right before 4th of July, and my wife and I and our daughter were flying to go to her parents' house for 4th of July with her family. So I'm taking interviews the day before 4th of July, oh, wow. you know, down on the dock and, like <laughs> – Real quick, you know, one, two interviews, and the next week I was here in Salt Lake for two days, met, met the team, met Kevin and Jill in person, and then uh, they made me the offer there, and, you know, just, it was fast. It was wow. very fast. Wow. Probably not That's... what most people are used to in an interview Yeah, because normally these things are pretty yeah. drawn out, but mm-hmm. you also, like, the season starts pretty quick. Yeah, November 1st, which is, even for me, coming from the, you know, the AHL, we start usually middle October, end of October, this November 1st. I mean, that's a blessing for me because yeah. I get a little bit more time to figure it out. When I started in Tucson, I started in September of last year. Two weeks later, we were hosting the Coyotes and Ducks preseason game, and then right. two weeks after that was our season. So, like, it was just 100%, you know, trial by fire in some aspects. But here, you know, you, you can kind of sit back a little bit and, like, Okay, I've got some time, but I also don't have a lot of time. So looking at the team now and looking at everything you've got, you you roll into Utah and you're like, okay, this is what I did last year. How can you apply a lot of that this year? Did you come in? Do you have a bunch of promotional ideas that are different? Like what can Utah fans, Utah Grizzlies fans, uh, expect from the sales perspective for for what you got going on? Yeah, I think – you know, the team here in Utah already had their promotional ideas and nights set. We've got some real fun ones. Um, the one I'm most exo- or excited for is Hockey for Her that a couple of our uh, account executives are putting on. Yeah. Um, it's going to be, you know, women in sports focused and, you know, hockey's for her, which, you know, I like now being a girl dad. I'm right. All, I'm all for that, right? So, um, you know, the promotion nights are – I've already seen the lineup and the list. I know they're going to release those in the next couple weeks. I think they're they're really decent. Um, a lot of it's going to be, you know, those one-off ticket packages for Star Wars nights and stuff like that. In Tucson, we did one where it was a ticket and a lightsaber. And I've never, you know, we did it wow. in Binghamton and people loved it and people loved it in Tucson. So, you know, it's stuff like that. But, um, you know, it's going to be those creative ideas, creative promotions that you're not going to see, you know, anywhere else. I know the team last year did tattoos on the ice. Yeah, I saw that. Which is uh, uh, inked against cancer, yeah, right? Yeah. Which my wife is probably happy I missed out on or I'd, I'd have a new tattoo. <laughs> do you have tattoos now? I, I do have one. Yeah. One. All yeah, right. Yeah, the, you're a little behind the curve. You got to yeah, get going. To the dismay of my parents, but um, Oh yeah. Yeah. I let my parents down a long time, so I went ahead and got a, <laughs> I went ahead and got 11 more. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's one of those things, right? You, you get one and you're like, "Oh, I've got to get another one." Yeah. So, I mean, my grandma I'm, says the ink's addictive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It is. My she believed that. Laws. She believed that with all of her soul, and I and I and I. It must be because I mm-hmm. keep getting them. Yeah, my brother-in-laws have them. My 
one brother-in-law he's a hockey player he's got the full sleeve he's oh, got wow. the light. yeah oh yeah yeah so um tell me a little bit about hockey for her yeah so like arizona was big they had the kachinas or whatever yeah and that was one of the first teams i really saw embrace mm -hmm. women's hockey and again i'm a i'm a girl dad as well mm -hmm. nice. and my daughter was like a an, an athlete mm -hmm. um it still is an athlete, still runs six miles a day. Uh, I, yeah, she's just mean. Um, <laughs> but, like, what's that like? Uh, what, what are we going to – what can we expect here? Uh, I, I think it's going to be – I don't want to give away too much because okay. we're still in the total planning stages. I, uh, we don't have to say anything about it if you don't want to. Or the, Here's some free – Yeah, I this think – This is free publicity for every hockey player in the state, basically. I think, I think it's going to be something that, you know – Anyone associated with, you know, women's sports, girl, you know, girls youth sports is going to want to be a part of. And I'll just kind of leave it at that for now. Well, I'm excited. That's yeah. cool. And it's my daughter's always been mad at me because she wanted to play hockey and my wife mm -hmm. begged her not to. She's like, mm -hmm. please. We already had like I was already playing. My son played mm -hmm. competitively up through okay. AAA and Junior A. And my wife was like, please just give me this. Don't let me don't make me have ulcers of, over my daughter being a girl. <laughs> hockey player goalie too so she just my daughter was a basketball player and then a soccer player okay so yeah so we she's still mad to this day that she didn't play hockey um because but she did fine um okay so you also uh, by the way guns and hoses that'll be a big night i guns saw and hoses i'm i'm looking for i in binghamton i ran our police fire in tucson same thing i'm looking forward to it it's always a big night and from what i understand here that's one of the nights they sell out the full Maverick Center. Yeah, so. that's the biggest night, and you're yeah. welcome. I started that. That's <laughs> that was uh, one of the that came to me one time. I'm like, I can't. We we got to be able to do this. I remember sitting in the shower, going like, I wonder if I can get this done. And I made a call, and mm -hmm. and the Grizzlies were very open to it. And we started out. It was kind of a gong show. Oh yeah. And we wondered if we'd be able to get enough police and fire to do it. Mm -hmm. And the first year we barely did, and then the second year we we had to have tryouts. Oh, wow. And then we just had, like, two games, and then the military wanted to get involved. And then one year we had a whole mm. tournament. Mm. And it was cool because we had police officers, firefighters. We had fire department, like, Boise Fire, Denver oh, wow. Fire. And, yeah, so they all came and took place, and then they all bought tickets to the games yeah. too. So it was really fun. Like, yeah. it's it's had all kinds of different versions of it. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's fun to see it still going because I had my fill of it after I ran it for 17 years. Mm-hmm on our end of organizing police and fire, which is like herding cats. Yeah. Oh, You'd yeah. think all the A-type personalities would be like, here, this is what you do. But then all the A-type personalities are like, no, I can do it better if I do it this way. Mm -hmm. So that was always kind of a mess. But um, all right, so that's that's that. That's Utah Grizzlies. Um, we're excited about that. Uh, I talked to Ryan Kanasiewicz last week, the coach. He was telling me that like he's excited. He's got what he thinks is going to be a championship team um he's he was so close his first couple of years mm -hmm. he had some dynamite players uh the, the avalanche provided us with dynamite goaltending and hopefully that happens again this year i, I haven't seen a goaltender signed yet i don't think i've seen a bunch of forwards yep i've seen the forwards and some returning players yep. so i know the grizzly if if ryan's this excited about it now it gets me pretty excited because he's yeah. experienced he knows what he's doing mm -hmm. he's a phenomenal coach like as an e-bug being on the ice with him and watching him coach, like I've been friends with Ryan for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, when I started e-bugging a thousand years ago, he was a player here. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's how, like, I've been doing it for a minute. It, <laughs> back from when we were in the A, actually. And he he was always such a, a fun player to be around. Uh, he was just crazy. Like, mm -hmm. he was just one of those just fun players. And, like, there were no holes barred for him. And he was just pure offense, pure fuel. Mm -hmm. And that was fun. Yeah. And then you see him grow up and then you see him become this coach. And now watching him mentor and watching his uh, just straight honesty with players mm -hmm. was so refreshing. Not that we didn't have that before. Yeah. But uh, it's just he's at another level when it comes to coaching. I, I don't I wouldn't be surprised to see him an AHL coach at some point or an NHL assistant coach yeah. before before too long because he's, he's a phenomenal coach. Yeah, I, I met Ryan a couple – or was it last week he stopped by my office. And you, you don't have that interaction really in the American Hockey League. In Binghamton we did. Tucson, our office wasn't in the arena. But here, I mean, Ryan came in and was like, you know, if you need anything, let me know. If you want any recommendations, um, asked by golf. I didn't tell him I'd 
golf, you know, not well. I just said, yeah, I golf. Oh, but, you'll fit right in with us then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you hit it off of the tee box, and we're really, I'm really not sure where it's going, but yeah. it's going somewhere. Yeah, that's me and Ryan. Um, but, yeah, Ryan's great. And, I mean, just from that interaction, that kind of speaks volumes to, the you know, the kind of coach like you just said that he is and, you know, making sure, you know, the front office staff, like, hey, you need anything, let me know and stuff like that. So that I look forward to seeing Ryan, you know, in, in the team through the season and, you know, have those interactions with him. Yeah, he gets it. Like he, he totally gets like how to be supportive of for everybody here, and you need that at the yeah in the ECHL. You, like you guys all have to work together. We talked about being in the trenches before. Mm-hmm. Like you, you're in the trenches, oh, so yeah. you need each other. Uh, the, it's like you said, that's kind of rare. Mm-hmm. But the coach, the, the you know the assistant coach, mm-hmm. everybody else is involved. Like probably Jill and Bruder are the least involved just because they're so busy with like actual Mm -hmm. business administration Mm -hmm. stuff and catering and all the other stuff you don't see behind the scenes but when it comes down to whatever it is it's going to be you and can ask which doing all the work yeah so that's that's exciting all right so you're our insider right now (laughs) like you've got all the like scouting reports on the utah hockey club prospects yeah yeah and we're talking going through uh Josh Doan, mm-hmm. like you've got them all, including our goaltenders. Yeah, like I don't, I don't see our two goaltenders switching, but inevitably during the course of an eighty-two game season, you're going to see a goaltender need a rest. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I don't, I'm not saying. Um, hopefully, there's no injury, knock on wood, whatever, oh, yeah. or whatever this desk is. Um, but you know, can you give us a little scouting report? Who are you excited to see get pulled up this year? Um, you know, I'm old school hockey. So, you know, I love the physicality. I oh, love yeah. the, the fights. One of my favorite players in Tucson was Curtis Douglas. Okay. I mean, the guy's at least 6'8 on skates. What? Right? Yeah, he's a big, he's a tall guy okay. to begin with. But, uh, you know, teams would go to start something, and he would finish it immediately. Um, so, I, I'd, you know, it's one of those things, um, you know, the guy there on the Rangers, Matt Rempe. Yeah, I, I was just love, gonna. I was just gonna compare. I would that. love to see those two go toe to toe at some point. Really, if he gets called up, yeah. Um, but you know, you talked about goaltending. Uh, Matt Valalta resigned with Tucson. I mean, he was a brick wall for us last year, and Tucson carried us into the playoffs and uh, against Calgary there. But you know, each year he just he continues to improve and you know get better and better. And you know, he's definitely someone I could see come up here in Utah and steal a couple wins when you know the team needs one. Um, but then, you know, we touched on Josh Doan. He's already up here. Um, I'm interested to see TJ Ginla. Yeah. I'm interested to see if he makes the team out of camp or if they, you know, how that situation unfolds. I can't see him making the team. Out. Like, I shouldn't say that because he'll probably make the team if yeah. I say he won't. <laughs> but I, it just seems like we have a lot of players already in place that have mm. th- that have done the work. You know, we have a b- bunch of other first-round picks, right? Oh, yeah. Utah only knows Tidge. They yeah. only know, like, oh – Again, let's come on. Mm-hmm. Uh, we watch him get drafted first, which means he'll play. And, you know, they're used to watching the Utah Jazz or whatever. And, mm-hmm. you know, your first pick is, especially if it's top 10 pick, is probably going to play that season. Playing, yeah. But there's a there's a good chance he doesn't make the team. But I'm excited yeah. to see him play too. Yeah. I'm really excited to see Josh Doan. Like, oh, Josh is, I mean, it's unbelievable in Tucson. I mean, it was technically it was his rookie year last year because he yeah. played the full, pretty much the full season. But just, you know, Obviously, he's got the last name, and that right, I'd agree with right. him. But just his hockey IQ and him seeing the plays, you know, he would make some passes, and we're like, "Where are you, you know, throwing?" But it landed on the tape, and it ended up in the net. And you know, he would make some you know, stuff happen that I've I've never seen before. So he's going to be an exciting player. It was fun to watch that first game, and mm-hmm. we had Josh on the show. Uh, he's actually one of the first guests we got to from okay. the from the new team, and we we talked to him about his you know, that first game. And I watched that mm-hmm. game. And that was when we were kind of like hearing that Arizona might be Utah. Yeah. And so I started trying to pay attention to to the Coyotes a little bit more. And watching Josh's first game was I like I wish I would have been there. Like that just oh, yeah. seems like it's that's one of those once in a lifetime thing is dad's in the stands, mm-hmm. his uncle's in the stand, ripping his shirt off and, <laughs> and going nuts, you know. Like and not just getting one goal, but two. Two, yeah. Like one classy, nice, pretty goal, and one blue collar. You know, like it didn't surprise me. I mean, and I hate to say it, but that was the first Coyotes game I watched last year. And really? Was, yeah, that was. 
I'm a Bruins fan by nature. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, that was the first Coyotes game I watched. But yeah, I was not surprised when he scored two goals in his first game. Yeah, I don't, um, I, apparently Adrian said the exact same thing. I yeah. wasn't surprised he, no. he put two in. No. Like he's just that guy. He's always in the right spot. He yeah. knows where to be and what to do. It's in his. It's it's in his pedigree. Yeah. Oh yeah. And it, it's and it's he's going to be that player. And, yeah. and everybody expects him to be full time NHL this year. Oh, a hundred percent. I don't see him going back down to Tucson at all unless some crazy happens but yeah were you in tucson two years ago with kirkoni when he was there no no oh, okay. but I've, I've heard stories yeah because i mean i i had him on the show last week and talking to him about like he he had a decent year mm-hmm. and then he had an like he Amazing. blew the whole ahl away yeah 85 points 164 penalty minutes mm-hmm. and i'm like that's almost three times the amount of penalty minutes you're used to and he's like one of the coaches finally came to me and told me I, if I was going to make it in this league or if I wanted to get pulled up, I needed to fight. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's usually what you tell your five foot nine, 180 180-pound yeah. scorer yeah. is to start dropping the gloves. Mm-hmm. Nobody tells. No. But he did it. Yeah, sometimes you got to do it. I mean, in Binghamton, we had a guy that sticks out like that, Brett Sini. Same thing. You know, he was, you know, five foot nine, would score a lot, and then all of a sudden one day it clicked, and, you know, he started getting into scuffles and getting into fights and – you know, took off. I think he's in Rockford now or somewhere up there. But yeah, he was a great player in Binghamton. Nice. Yeah. I lo- yeah. It's just, I love hearing it. We, uh, I'm really close friends with the Manic family from here. And their, their son, Mason Manic, was working his way up through juniors, played in Portland. Mm-hmm. And again, he's like 5'8, maybe. Yeah. Like, but they're like, hey, you're a juniors, man. You're going to have to throw down. Mm-hmm. And, he, and that's what his dad did and his uncle had done. They were kind of known for being yeah. fighters. And, uh, yeah, he started doing it, and he was good at it, and he was yeah. fighting some big boys at his small yeah. size. And it was like, it's more fun to watch a little guy. Yeah. Nah, I shouldn't say little guy. It's, it's well, it's more fun to watch a five foot eight or five foot nine guy have to fight or start fighting. I, yeah. I find it more fun. Like, my, I mean, my brother-in-law is the same way. He plays in the uh, ECHL up in Iowa for them. Same thing, five foot nine, went to UD for uh, college and, you know, came out. And, you know, he's, he's feisty. Nice. His, you know, his girlfriend hates it. My <laughs> wife hates it, you know, when he gets in a fight. But I'm over there secretly cheering for him when he, you know, picks on the bigger guys and takes them down. So, when you, you mean Denver University? Yeah. Yeah, he played in Denver. Who is it? Uh, Jake Durflinger. Okay. I thought I would know. I watched a lot of DU games last oh, okay. year. But, um, well, that's great. That, that's that's awesome. Anybody else that we should know about that you think is going to surprise us this year and make the roster or um, make some impactful appearances for the team? I think – did they resign uh, Milos Kellerman? I don't know. Tucson, he would be a good one in Utah. Um, there's a, just a bunch of young forwards. They've, I mean, the Coyotes, Utah Hockey Club, they've stockpiled draft picks. Yeah. So they've got they've got a lot of talent. Yeah. It's there, just a matter of finding them a spot. Watching the draft this year and and just knowing what they had, mm-hmm. like I had never really like when you see a draft get weaponized, right? Mm-hmm. And they're like, hey, we've got all these picks or we're going to do something. And to see them kind of start flexing a little bit of that muscle that they've been yeah. waiting to to flex and to pull off two first-round picks. Yeah. And that Cole Baudouin that we picked up is a, is a phenom too. Mm-hmm. And, like, the Montreal Canadiens were salivating about this guy and really just like, oh, this guy's going to be available for us. He's going to be available. And then, nope, nope, stole him at the last second. So that was fun to watch. Um and I think it's just going to get like that for the for the next couple of years. I think we're, yeah. oh, we've yeah. got picks and we've yeah. got we can move some you know some people or picks or whatever it mm-hmm. takes to really make the team good. It's going to be fun to see all that stuff pay off finally for all the pain that the you know the the Arizona fans went through yeah. and they they went through so much. Oh, and yeah. I feel horrible that they lost their team mm-hmm. and I hope. Uh, there are some rumors now that the guy that owns the Suns is going to maybe mm-hmm. give it a run or try to yeah. figure that out. And I really hope that happens. But for all that pain, I know those guys are going to be watching and be seeing like what can Bill Armstrong actually pull off now that the handcuffs are off. Yeah, I think I think Bill's got some uh, you know ammo to use. And I think I think Utah Hockey Club, if it's not this year, I think two three years they're going to be a contender. Yeah, for sure. And it's funny they're you know NHL.com's posting all this stuff and. Uh, one of them yesterday blew everybody away, and it was like uh, the top 20. Or they ranked every team in the NHL mm-hmm. by confidence they had in the front office. 
I had never seen that done, and I don't know That's what the criteria yeah. is, but Utah was fourth on that list. Oh, wow. And the confidence in the front office from the moves they pulled, the contracts they've signed. And I went to the comments, and everybody's like, what are you even talking about? Like, Arizona didn't even make the playoffs last year. And you're like, that's not it. That's yeah. not the... That's not the skill that we're weighing this mm-hmm. on. It's like, have you, do you know what you're doing with your draft picks? Do you know mm-hmm. what you're doing with these long term contracts? We still have Shea Theodore on there making, you know, millions a year. And I think it's for one or two more years. But, oh, yikes. Yeah. Who's never going to play again? Like, yeah. he's been injured. Mm-hmm. I would have loved to have seen him play in Utah. That would have been amazing. Oh, yeah. And to, in even one step further, to be an e bug and take that that shot that would have been incredible you're a better man than me <laughs> i love it and i i pray that i like i buy the best equipment possible mm-hmm. and i just pray that it always works oh yeah because even at the echl level like those guys shoot hard yeah those are and a lot of them are still nhl shooters mm-hmm. they just don't maybe have there's mm-hmm. one piece missing from the game but yeah. it, maybe it's not the shot because yeah. i'll still leave and i have like i said i have nhl approved equipment mm-hmm. and i'll still leave a grizzlies practice with several welts Oof. And I've done. I've, I've skated. Well, I skate with NHL guys all the time. But I've skated three actual NHL practices, mm-hmm. and just gotten destroyed. Uh, yeah, no. There, like, I skated one with Columbus, and like, I don't even. There were times I was like, I don't even think I can stop any of these guys. Like, even the fighters. Like, I was just at some point hoping they'd shoot at me. But if if, if it were me in that, it'd be that scene from you know Mighty Ducks where they take <laughs> yeah. they tied Goldberg to the net. That yeah. would be that would be me in that because I wouldn't be able to stop anything. There was, I just saw one of the online videos about that. They're like, how messed up is this scene actually? That they tied, <laughs> they, you know, they tied to the posts and then just, then it's not oh, like yeah. they're just taking wristers at them either. They're no. just clap bombs. No, and, someone did that today to be in a lot, a lot <laughs> yeah. of trouble. Yeah. 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 It's pretty funny. Um, all right. Well, I think, you know, we wanted to get some of the inside information on the team and on Tucson and on the Grizzlies. Mm-hmm. And anything else you want to say about the Grizzlies stuff? No, I think it's going to be, like you said, I think it's going to be an exciting year. Um, you know, I always tell people the hockey gods owe me from COVID. Devils were the hottest team in the A. Oh. And then COVID happened, and, you know, we had a team that could have won a Calder Cup. So the, the hockey gods owe me, owe me a championship somewhere. All right. Didn't do it in Tucson, so hopefully it translates over to uh, Utah. Can you – and, I, again, mm-hmm. I'm going to start some rumors. <laughs> but – can you imagine that this, if this is Utah's last, if this is the Grizzlies' last season in the ECHL, mm-hmm. and what a better way to go out oh, yeah. than a championship team. We've got you here who the hockey gods owe a championship to, clearly. Exactly. Yeah. That's fair, right? It is fair. We got Kanasovic saying, like, he's excited. Mm-hmm. And he's excited that the, he, the team that is falling into place, not falling into place, that guy works his tail off to oh, get these yeah. players. But the team that he's building right now, he thinks is one of his best teams ever. And they had a team a while ago, again, during the COVID year that kind of got robbed. Um, it seems like maybe everything's falling into place. So, like, if this is going to be the last season of the ECHL mm. in the Mavericks Center, which it should be. because And I'm not saying that the Grizzlies should go away. I'm saying right, that right, right. The ECHL moves, the AHL franchise comes here. And just so our fans understand... You don't get promoted. Mm. This isn't European soccer yeah. where that happens. Nope. You have to bring in a different franchise. Mm-hmm. And then at that point, somebody would own an ECHL mm-hmm. and an AHL franchise. But that would be a, a heck of a way to go out. That would be perfect. Yeah, that would be great. And that would be great for your first season here is yeah. like, hey, look what I did. Yeah. And, and then- it's got to sell more tickets that way. It's got to be yeah. easier to sell tickets. Oh, yeah. Especially, you know, when the team's doing well, you know, fans notice. Yeah, you know, we always in Tucson. We always played the if the team was in first place, like hey, come see your first place Roadrunners, in Binghamton with the Devils. Team wasn't always great, so we had like two weeks where we could use hey, come see your first place Devils, and then you know, drop back down to the bottom of the standings. But yeah, <laughs> you, you got to capitalize where you can, right? Well, in the East Coast League, well, any any farm club, right? Mm-hmm. It, whether you're in the ECHL or the AHL, you're you are a subject of your parent club. Exactly. And whatever ha- whatever they want is mm-hmm. you're at their beck and call. Mm-hmm. And you could be like, all right, we're going to ride this Hawk goaltender. We're, we're kicking butt. And then all of a sudden the, your parent club says, you know what, we need that goaltender. And then you drop five straight games yeah. or, you know. So, yeah. Uh, one more question about that, actually. Mm-hmm. And this is something we brought up a lot. What do you think? 
a lot of people don't feel like there is enough room for two teams here right now. Mm-hmm. Like NHL, ECHL. Yeah. I don't see it that way. Right. I think a lot of people are going to get excited about there more people than before are going to watch hockey. Mm-hmm. And they're going to go like, "Hey, either I can't afford to go to an NHL game or they're sold out." Yeah. Oh, which yeah. most of those games are are already sold out. Yeah. And they're like, "But, you know, for 20 bucks for the price of a movie, yeah, I go catch the Grizzlies. Exactly. And watch drafted guys, junior guys, mm-hmm. college guys. That you know, I go watch them play. Mm-hmm. It's not the NHL, but it's not. I mean, it's great hockey. It is great hockey. Yeah. I like, and people don't understand that the ECHL is still phenomenal hockey. Mm-hmm. These are still all guys that played NCAA Division One, Division Three, or they're guys that maybe even got drafted, played in the A. Yeah. Um. So, are you along that same thought process that this is going to help grow ticket sales for the Grizzlies? Yeah, I think, you know, to the point you said, like, some of the games are already sold out down here at the Delta Center. Yeah, and, you know, does it come down to affordability? And, you know, we always tell our staff, you know, sell to the kids. If the kids, you know, see the game on, you know, TV, you see the NHL game, and they're like, oh, this is in Utah, and, you know, maybe you can't afford those NHL tickets. You know, that's what the ECHL is here, and, you know, we're the that family affordable price point. Um, like you said, price of a movie, you know, come watch hockey for, you know, two – three hours yeah um, but even then you know you talk about um in the american hockey league we had you know laval is right across the river from montreal they seem to make it work granted you know canadians are yeah. pas- very right, passionate right. about their hockey um but there are other teams that are close san jose their you know ahl team plays in their you know right off their practice rink in san jose so they've got to compete both ways but it, it can work it definitely works and i think salt lake city is a, a big enough market growing market that you know, you're going to have people that are going to want to go to the NHL will go there, and the people that want to come see the Grizzlies will come see the Grizzlies, and, you know, and there'll be some intertwining. But I don't see that, like, cannibalizing us at all. Yeah, and that's uh, – a lot of people were pretty worried about the Grizzlies when this got announced. They just assumed the Grizzlies would go away, and I was like, no, this is going to – I in my, you know, limited view of life, I really thought this would help sell tickets for the Grizzlies. Yeah. And I really, I really believe it will, and I hope mm-hmm. it does. I love the Grizzlies. Yeah. I, you know – I've done everything I can for the Grizzlies, from e-bugging to play-by-play. To I've I've done PA announce when Chris Hagen gets sick, I come mm-hmm. in and do the PA announcing. Uh, I've sold, you know, I started Guns and Hoses, so I yep. sold tickets for that. I've done other nights for for the team, you know, and I've done everything I can to make that organization yeah. successful. I believe in it. I love yeah. that organization, and I love that building. Oh, it's great! Like that's an Olympic building. There were gold medals handed mm-hmm. out of that building in hockey. Like, yeah, how funny, many buildings can say that? Yeah, funny story. There's actually a uh, room down there that they used for storage. It was the Team Canada locker room in 2002, yeah. and they've all they all autographed the wall, so it's all protected by you know plexiglass. Yeah, and there's like Mario Lemieux on there and all those guys, and just that hockey history is just unbelievable. I've never seen that in another arena. Yeah, it's pretty freaking amazing yeah that that building has some history to it and i hope that people realize that because a lot of people bash on that building i'm like there's nothing to bash on from the player standpoint the players love it like it's great ice it's especially now that they switch the lights out to led Mm -hmm. and so it's not heating the heating the ice as much um anyway i'm probably keeping you longer than you wanted to keep i just like to talk hockey it's fine i was just say i've seen some pretty bad arenas but that might be a conversation for another time i've seen some too and i've been i've i've been in some buildings that you think are great yeah and even like on the home team side you're like oh this is great and then you're like even just the building in boise Mm -hmm. if you're the home team you're like this building's phenomenal and Mm -hmm. if you're in the visiting team you're like this is garbage like we're in the (laughs) we're in the closet how like there's not enough Mm -hmm. room for a whole team to get dressed in there yeah so yeah, there it's it's different. And even on the NHL side, for a long time, there were there were some buildings that weren't great. Oh yeah. But anyway, well, I uh, I just want to wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Hopefully everything works out the way we talked about it, and yeah. the NHL team builds up tons of ticket sales for mm-hmm. you, and the hockey gods pay you back your your championship you're owed. Yeah. And then us as Utahns just get to reap the rewards because the more people that are in that Maverick Center cheering on the Grizzlies, mm-hmm. the better the Grizzlies do, and yeah. the more fun it is for all of us. Oh, yeah. Home ice advantage is a real thing in hockey. It really is, especially when the you know the, the stadium's packed. It really is a you know huge advantage to have the you know, it, fans behind you. Yeah, and it, it feeds the team, but it also, like, the the fans feed off each other and yeah. start having more fun. And Oh, yeah. You start a, high-fiving people you don't know. Yeah. Sometimes you hug someone you don't know. It's crazy. Yeah, exactly. It's a good time. So if I wanted tickets right now, what do, who do I call? What do I do? 
great question. I'm still learning my phone number. 988 so. 8000 Yeah. <laughs> 801-988-8000. Yep. Is, uh, it's, that's the front desk, and then I'll get you to, to whoever else. Yours is 8001, probably. Yeah, 8001, yeah. Yep. Um, and then utahgrizzlies.com, probably. Yep. Um, there's group sales on there, too. It's a great Oops. great yeah. opportunity to take it. Like, if you have a Boy Scout group or Girl oh, Scout yeah. group or whatever, or if it's your – fraternity or sorority those nights are great to to go out to and have a yeah. have a beverage and enjoy a hockey game yeah yeah any groups full seasons full seasons are still on sale many plans single games went on sale monday so we're rocking and rolling nice love to hear it yeah. john riley utah grizzlies and uh thanks for being on the show thanks jay thanks for having me all right and that is the utah puck report I want to give a special thanks to chipman roofing these are hockey people supporting the hockey community. It's Chipman Roofing. For all your roofing needs, uh, just check out chipmanroofing.com. And if you like what you hear on the podcast, please leave a review, leave a rating. Wherever you listen to your podcast, uh, make sure you give us a rating. I'd like to uh, check out kslsports.com as well. Uh, there's going to be more hockey on there. As, as more hockey comes up, it's going to be always right there, kslsports.com. Big thanks to Madison Miller for putting up with us and making this thing work. Oh, 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 oh